Welcome to Soul Thrive, where we explore spirituality through healing trauma, shadow work, and applying the laws of the universe in order to master ourselves without the fear of the unknown. Hi, Grace, and welcome to the Soul Thrive podcast. Thank you for being on here today. We are so excited to dive into this conversation with you. But before we start, I'd like you to start off by introducing yourself to our audience. So go ahead. Hello, everyone. My name is Grace Belfiore, and I have been on a journey of finding myself and aligning to connecting with God. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has been an incredible journey. And my goal is to help awaken souls and help them heal, help them to really look inside what is going on. Why are they stuck? Why are the relationship trouble? So for me, this has been a journey for about 25 years and who knows, who knows how many lifetimes. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I just love working with children family generations. That's something that I really love doing is helping families see the intergenerational lines. So it's all about the family intergenerational trauma. And we're here to heal and shift the energy on this earth plane in this time. It's a miraculous time. And we're all incredible mm -hmm. souls that are here to do that. Absolutely. We were just actually talking about that yesterday in one of our podcast episodes that we recorded. And we were talking about ancestral trauma and how right now it's so imperative for individuals to really access those parts of themselves because we really do bring in generation after generation after generation and how it's impacting um, change right now. And we need to change and rewrite history in a lot of ways. So Grace, I'm loving that you have that presence for individuals to be able to have that conversation. So what would a session look like if you were to, let's say, dive into the family dynamics um, or that ancestral stuff? So pretty much, you know what, you come into my office, we sit down, we start talking and we talk about what's going on in life right now. Mm -hmm. And usually, you know, it's always about my mom, this, my dad, this, you know, I can't this. And they, they all feel like they're not seen, they're not heard, right? You know, nobody understands them, they don't have a safe place, who's yelling, who's screaming, who's too open. So the children nowadays, I find, or the teenagers are feeling lost, right? But they don't have a purpose. So what I do is we dig deep into, uh, I'll do regression, okay, I'll do cutting cords to help them understand that everything is perfect. Mm -hmm. The divine has created a beautiful plan and we've chosen our parents to learn and to take away this pain that is here on earth, all this domination, all this fear that we hold on to. So by looking inside and then I get them to see that they are acting like their mom or dad. So right. Right. Oh, the right. adaptation part. Absolutely. Right. Of course. A hundred percent. Yes. Like they're actually doing themselves. Right. Right. Cause that's all they so, know. Right. At the end of the day, they only know that that's their adaptation at the end of the day. Like you're going to be like mom or you're going to be like dad. You're going to act that way. And I think more and more people need to, adults need to register that they're still acting like their parents. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and uh, I feel like mostly the adults are the children in the home. Oh, yes. Like, <laughs> Don't get me started on that, Grace. Because <laughs> I work with that. And like, sometimes I'm like, they'll come to me and tell me, oh, my kid is acting out this way, or my kid is acting out this way. And I'm like, first of all, I think you're the problem and your kid's fine. And they're adapting to, like you were saying, these behavior patterns that they're, they're only used to in the environment that they exist in. So, um, children, I like that you're saying like, they are perfect. Children are perfect. They have that innocence and the teenagers are, they're looking for ha to, to have more of that autonomy and sense of self. And, and I wish adults, I mean, now mo more so adults are learning how to heal some generational trauma and stuff, but yeah, totally agree with that. So the children are feeling lost because they have no one to really speak to. No one understands them. Right. And so I feel like I am that young child inside of me of my trauma. Right. And I never had anyone guide me. So that's what I feel that I do on this earth plane right now is guiding mm -hmm. these teenagers 
that they are special and that we are just all programs and patterns of what we've adapted to. Yeah. yeah. It's our home, our religion, our community, our teachers, our schools. And it's time to unravel all those veils and truly find the soul that is living inside and find that power and connection to God. Cause yes. I have a little logo mantra, the three C's mm -hmm. that we're here to connect the calmer we are, the more confident we become. Yes. And yes. we know who we are. Mm -hmm. And there's no more trying to prove or looking for outside validation when we have that inner validation. Yes. I think in emphasizing those in a teenager or like a younger child is so fundamental. Harder when you're an adult that's gone through more contrast, but definitely such a good source of a connection piece for a developmental, like in that developmental stages of like a teenager who's looking for guidance and can lead into that confidence and find more of that sense of who they are. So that's like a beautiful thing that you offer people. I really love that you're working with, I work with people's inner teenager, like adults who have the inner teen. And let me tell you, it is like rebellion, 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 <laughs> right? Cause like they didn't have that in their childhood. They didn't have those experiences in their childhood to have someone guide them, to be a support for them, to help encourage their confidence, to build their self-esteem. And so now as an adult, you're, you're operating with that people pleasing tendency, right. Or that, oh. right. So yeah. I, it, right. so I love how you're, you're, you're catching them and then <laughs> before they can come to me. <laughs> well, I work with the adults too. So I yeah. work with the parents as well, right? Yes. Because I'm like you, right. The parents call me, oh my God, you got to work with my child. My child's a mess. Yes. I can't talk to them. They don't listen. And I try to do the same as you, but I say, okay, first, let me speak with you. Then I mm -hmm. see the child and then I go back to the parent yes. and I really get them to see that everything, you know, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Exactly. Love that. And so when we can be aware and more, you know, understanding, then we can open up the doors. It's like opening up the heart. Mm -hmm. So many layers on the heart of especially being in this world yes. of have to work, we need money, we need all the outside things to satisfy us, instead of saying, okay, is that material thing really going to make me happy? Yeah, I agree with that. Yep. Ivana, and, Ivana has a question. Yeah. <laughs> I can see I just, she's itching. She's like, what? Where's my turn? <laughs> no, and like, I like how you say that, you know, um, we operate in two states. It's either like suffering or non-suffering. Uh, and suffering is like the things that you talked about, like things that we are consumed by in the 3D world. Like I have to do, do, do and go, go, go and maintain an image and make money and all of that stuff. And that's really living in in fear and living in sadness versus living in joy. How do you help your clients just, I guess, isn't, would the first step be for them to actually realize that that's the state that they're operating in? Because you also talked about how they make, people are often not aware how they make decisions out of their emotional states. Absolutely. We are so unaware. Uh, we're so reactive. We have all these little children inside of us that have been traumatized through our bringing up. And so it's about recognizing, whoa, I just did that. I, I mean to my mom or I mean to my child and why? And, and they don't even realize until someone brings it up to them. Mm -hmm. so that's what I love to do is help to show them. I understand where you're coming from. Maybe that's all you knew how you were spoken to. But how does it feel when you're spoken to in that manner? Mm -hmm. So it's about helping them to open up and become more aware of what they're doing. And then we can dig deep. And then it's like, you know, taking the layers off the heart, right? Taking the layers off that hurt mm -hmm. and that pain. So it's all about forgiveness. When we can see that everyone is just an actor, that we are all perfect beings and there's no mistakes and every single person that encounters with us is for us to learn mm -hmm. so if we can be in a state of trust flow and belief then when we're going through a situation that could be traumatic we're gonna stop pause and say oh god what is this for what am i here to learn mm -hmm. But if we are in a state of suffering where we're, you know, angry and frustrated, 
we become victims and then we start blaming everyone else for our situation, what we created. Right. Which goes into, yeah, like that third dimensional thinking where it's so dense in, in like that separation. And then if you were to do the work and reflect and awaken, there is that opportunity to really operate from like a fifth dimensional perspective, which is more interconnectedness. And, um, you know, that you're forgiving aspects of yourself. And when you forgive aspects of yourself for what you didn't know, or the mistakes or whatever else, then there's the opportunity to forgive because all everyone's a a, a version of you regardless. Right. So forgiving yourself forgives unconsciously everything else around you too, which is great, but it's pulling people, I think out of that third dimensional, like victim mentality aspect where, or they're blaming external factors and they're not doing anything with that. They're not nurturing and healing those parts of themselves, which I think is like, yeah, it's great to be um, a good beacon for a light for them in that way for, for people to help transition from 3d to 5d mentality, which is huge. <laughs> and we yeah. need to pull more people into that. Yeah. I think. <laughs> Absolutely. Cause you know, there's so much fear, especially how we're being so controlled by the yes. media, right. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and, you know, who's going to be this. And we're kind of just all in this, I call it the spinning, you know, the spiral of going down mm -hmm. instead of just stopping and really pausing for that second and saying, okay, really, why am I here? Mm -hmm. Like I find for me, meditation and just connection of being in that state of love, right? When you're in a state of love and knowing whatever is coming your way, you accept it, mm -hmm. right? And, and there's nothing more powerful than acceptance. Mm -hmm. Being in that stillness instead of, you know, being in that 3D of victimhood and then why, why, why? and blaming. And one thing that I do with my clients a lot is, okay, we're going to blame, you know, we're pointing that finger. One, we're mad at God, we're mad at the world. Then we're mad at that person, we're blaming that person, but there's three fingers coming back. Mm -hmm. We can only see in others what's inside of us. That's yeah. that reflection, right? Absolutely. I agree. So- yeah. It was you took us through like a little bit of a meditation, which was nice. <laughs> That's what that felt like. It was like a moment where we just like zend. I just zend out. I was like, yeah, that makes sense. That's fun. That feels yeah. good to be in. Yeah. <laughs> but it also must be challenging. Like of you're course. working with, with clients who, like to your point, if you want to get to that state of um non-suffering where you kind of have like love and acceptance towards yourself, you have forgiven aspects of yourself, maybe you've forgiven your parents. Or, or what might like, like all those people that you've previously sort of accused of and saying like, you know, I'm a victim because you did this to me. Um, but for some, how do you help someone actually like love and accept aspects of themselves if there's so much like maybe self-hatred underneath all of that? Like, what is the first step? Like, how do you even go about that process? Because I feel like that's one of the hardest things to do is to actually accept all of those parts of us because we're always going to be so afraid of being judged Absolutely. And there's the, that's a big one, right? So there's the judgment, how we judge ourselves. So wrong. Right. We, we're, it's constantly judging. We, it's everywhere, right? We look at our, the way we look, our bodies, right? What we're driving, what we're doing, what we're saying. So really what I do is, you know, I, I think it's, it's a comfort zone. So I really have this big heart that people just feel like I go into them and it's like, you know, as a connector, I can feel them. So mm -hmm. when they're speaking, I'll also have some signs and symbols for my divine, a little connection, and then I'll bring something up and I'm like, Hey, I see something like around four years old. And I start mm -hmm. going to the inner mm -hmm. children mm -hmm. and I'll say, okay, what happened at that time that makes you feel that you're this bad little girl. Right. And then we'll go into that moment. We'll do a regression. We kind of heal that moment. We take away the, the old, and then I recreate love and okay. I recreate forgiveness, acceptance, and bringing the soul to the surface, because mm -hmm. that's what it's all about. The soul is hiding behind through this mask. So I help guide them to see that they are incredible and I help them to speak. Mm -hmm. So I give them a voice. I deal with the chakras. We work in there. And so I'll help them find themselves 
And then I give them guidance, whether it's with friends, whether it's at school. And so by guiding them, they start to become more powerful. Mm -hmm. And they have that sense of, wow, I have someone that hears me. I have someone that understands me. And then we just unravel all the old and create new. So I'll guide to who they are and what they need. So through sessions, through communications, we, I guess, dig deep to the bottom of core of why they feel the way they feel. Mm -hmm. And do you feel it almost always goes back to childhood? Always. Yeah, always. I agree with that. You yeah. know, I always say that. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think there's multiple ways of working with it. I think if anyone's open to working with the inner child, they should really lean into it because I think like it really does, in my opinion, change so much in everyone's life. Um, so it's it's great that you guide your clients to be able to do that practice with them so that they, especially, like I said, teenagers and children, it's, it's easier if we catch them younger because then we have the ability to work so much it's integrated work faster. Mm -hmm. You can integrate faster. And an adult, there's layers, right? There's layers of consciousness and awareness. And so it may just take multiple times to go revisit certain aspects of themselves, right? And that's part of the healing process. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I, I do do like agree. Inner child is always a way to go. <laughs> and then also a lot of cutting cords. Okay. So with whatever situation is going in their lives, right? So if their parents were mean to them or, you know, they want to go somewhere and their parents are saying no, mm -hmm. or, you know, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, relationships, I do a lot of cutting cords. So it's- Does that feel away. more like boundaries though? Does that feel like you're teaching them more of just like the visualization of boundaries? This cord cutting is like very interesting for me because I've been working as a, also as a psychic medium and for years I've been doing all of that. There, it's it's It can be sometimes when you're doing certain cord cutting elements, it can be actually more detrimental than good depending on the circumstance. So I like that you're saying you're letting them choose to like release a part of themselves that's tied to the lack of a boundary. And that's going to teach them the visualization of what it would look like to say, I don't need that type of dynamic in my life. I'm setting a boundary by cutting that cord to that, I guess, toxic behavior pattern or that adaptation or, you know, that emotional entanglement of some sort or that trauma bond, whatever that may look like. So yeah, I like that. Like the visualization technique of that is so powerful. Yes. Lots of visualization of bringing in their true soul and yeah. seeing the, you know, the I guess I don't even want to call it power, but love inside of them to understand that it's okay for them to be them. It's right. okay for them to say, no, thank you. Yes. I'm interested, you know, bringing, especially for women, I tend to bring a lot of respect mm -hmm. and help them understand that we don't have to give ourselves to everyone. Oh, yes. So true. My goodness. I mean, we're learning more of that now mm -hmm. too, over time, right? Like you're so conditioned from such a young age to just be of service. And like, we, like, we don't even understand what that means. And sometimes even we just do it in a way where we're just constantly giving our attention, our time, our, our you know, and we invalidate and abandon ourselves in some way, some form. So yeah, we have to, as women, I think, develop more respect for ourselves. So I love that you said that that's yeah. bang on with that. Absolutely. To be really the feminine, right? That yeah. Here to be right. Cause I feel like so many women now are so masculine. Oh, Yes. We and were just talking about that today. I was actually, we had, a, we had a conversation earlier today and I was like, Ivana, you're in your masculine energy. She's like, you're right. You're right. You know, I have to be more, I'm like, tap into more of that sensitive side of you. Like, but the, I think we were having the conversation around, um, sometimes people assume because they're emotional that they don't register that they're still in their victim mentality. So there's a little bit of that difference of like being in your feminine energy feels very empowering because you can be vulnerable yes. versus being in your, with the idea of what your feminine energy is, which can be tied to still blaming external situations. There's the, that we were having that bit of that conversation. Like feeling powerless to the situation. The powerless. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The powerlessness in a situation. Yeah, absolutely. Because 
you know, our, our mothers and our ancestors, they yes. had to do what the men wanted, the men power yes. back then. But now it's about, no, we have, we have a voice. Mm -hmm. We can speak. Let's, you know, it's about relationships, about relating together. What is good for you? What is good for me? Let's bring it together. Let's merge. Yeah. Let's teach our kids what we didn't have, you know, and bring that love in and understanding instead of me, 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 like, I have a couple of couples I'm working with right now. Mm -hmm. and like, do you want to be right? Or oh, like yeah, exactly. Like, That's the statement. Happy? That's the statement. Do you want to be right? Or do you want to be happy? Do you want to be, it's like, do you want to be right? Or do you want to be married? Do you want to be right? Or do you want to be in this relationship? I say that quite often too. And it's true because everyone likes to play a zero sum game. They don't, they feed into that far more than they do wanting to find harmony and balance in a relationship and re resolve conflict. Um, it's no, I'm right. You're wrong. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. that's again, that divide instead of that, like interconnectedness of like opening each other's hearts and taking in one another and, and finding joy in that experience. So mm -hmm. yeah, so true. That statement. <laughs> I have, I have another, that. I have another question on this, on the topic of women being masculine and then Come, what comes with that is also the inability to identify your own needs. So I'm curious, how do you work with women uh, to help them identify their their needs that they're probably not even aware of because maybe they're just too busy going and doing and achieving and making money and being disconnected from themselves? Yes, because they've become, you know, workaholics, right? Whether, you know, how many women nowadays are divorced? And, you know, have to work, have to put the food on the table, have the children, and they really don't have time for anything because mm -hmm. they're in this ego state, this, this, uh, I have to do mm -hmm. instead of allowing them. So I help them find themselves. I help right. them see, is this really what you want or is this what you've become mm -hmm. because of what you've been through? Right. And then they... It's like, what do you mean? I have no choice. This is all I can do. And that's what they believe. So I have to help them release some of their old belief forms right. and help them bring in the new so they can start creating and attracting and manifesting their real true essence. Yes. As women, we're here to magnetize and help receive, not give. Yes, it's a give, receive, but we need balance. Mm-hmm instead of just do do that we've become too masculine and it's time to bring that feminine back but with a speech with mm -hmm. love because women are you know i think we're the ones we're the ones that have children we're the ones that really feel and sense men are the doers and we have to give that back to them because so many men now become i don't want to say the word but wimps yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, we, uh, yeah, we were having that conversation not too long ago about masculine energy now, not really. I mean, it's, I hate to say it, it is, it is our fault as women. We've created that dynamic regardless because we wanted our rights and we had every reason to want rights. And this goes back to your needs. Like we had needs as women because we were controlled for such a long time. And then we stripped men of their power. And there were some, there are really good men out there that really want to be men and women don't let them be men. Yes. And they want to show intimacy and they want to show connection and they want to show how special you are and they want to take care of you. And we're like, what do you mean you want to do all those things? You're going to take something from me. We're like, uh, we're like waiting for like the other shoe to drop or like a threat to happen of some sort because we've leaned, so many people have leaned, women have leaned into the masculine energy of trying to protect themselves or trying to take something back, their power. That goes back into a lot of that ancestral trauma that we were talking about, that point of perspective perspective of just like this ongoing um, conversation and these wounds. And we're not defining the divine feminine as intuitive, as harmonious, as balanced, as manifestors, as, you know, part of the universe. God, I, I feel like men are so associated with the concept of like beliefs, God, image, and they're here to help us make things happen. And we don't let them. <laughs> and why do you think that is? Is it because women go back to that fear of being like dominated? I don't know. Is that, yeah. is that why it's so hard for like women to go into their feminine? 
Absolutely, because we're here to shift that, right? We're here right now, I think, on this earth plane for balance, mm -hmm. right? And becoming one, because as we said before, there's such separation. Yep. And so we need to come back and just notice that there's no one really taking from us. Mm -hmm. It's just us really finding ourselves and then being able to connect and move forward. Yeah. But we're so in fear of being attacked. We're so in fear of being dominated and not being able to speak or be our truth. So right away we have guards. Oh mm -hmm. no, 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 you're not doing that for me. No, don't pull my chair out. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, I can do that. But what happened? We got lost. I love being like, you know, I'm an old soul. Like I love a man taking care of me. I love my doors open. Mm -hmm. You know, it feels like special because it feels like, I'm being looked at, I'm mm -hmm. being honored and that's special. But right away, what do we do? We go and open the door. I was that before and I had to shift. I had to release all my trauma and my domination of being a workaholic to say, no, I work for God now. I mm -hmm. connect and I'm here to help souls find their true self. And it's not about money and power. It's really about just feeling and connecting. Yes. When you're in that great place, it really just flows. I agree with that. That's beautiful. Well, Grace, this was a great conversation. I'm so happy and honored. I got to connect with your energy. We're both so happy and honored. We got to connect with your energy. Uh, you took us through a really beautiful little meditation at one point, which was fantastic. We loved that completely. And I'm so glad we had the conversation about the divine feminine. I really do feel like that is definitely something that I think we should do more and talk yeah, about more. I um, but thank you so much for coming on our podcast today. We appreciate it so much. Thank well, you, I'm, Grace. I'm so grateful for being asked. Thank you so much for Christina meeting you and Ivana. I'm so grateful for this wonderful moment. And I hope we can have many more. Uh, have absolutely. It'd be great. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you, Grace. Thank you.